In today's video, we're going to cover everything that you need to know about Madden 23. And to help us with that, we're bringing in a special guest, Spruce Goose. And if you're not familiar with Spruce Goose, he has over 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's one of the top weekend league players in the entire world, and he streams every single one of his games on Twitch. He has also been given exclusive access to the beta for Madden 23, and he's here with us to share his thoughts on what Madden 23 is like and how it compares to Madden 22. Be sure to subscribe to Spruce Goose's YouTube channel as he drops videos every week that help you become a better Madden player. All right, let's talk Madden 22 first, and then we'll switch over to Madden 23. But Madden 22, first of all, I want to get your thoughts on the game as a whole, and then oh we'll gosh. break into how that compares to Madden 23. Madden 22 is, to be quite frank, one of the worst Madden games I have ever played. Um, and I think most people who have played it would probably agree. I think that ultimately all the countless issues for me, they all can be boiled down into, it feels like the skill gap in Madden 22 is the lowest of probably any Madden game that we've ever seen. So speaking of the future and what that looks like, you've played the, be you played the beta for Madden mm -hmm. 23. You got a little bit of a taste of what that's gonna be like as we move forward into the next iteration of Madden. Do we still see the same player motion? Does it feel the same? Are there any improvements that you've seen just so far? It, it is definitely the same engine. Uh, I would say the player movement is slightly better. I would say it's more so noticeable on the defensive side. I think that it's more noticeable with the user. I know in Madden 22, it feels very difficult to use or like when you're trying to, you know, cover one route and then you decide to switch to a different route, your change of direction and acceleration feel extremely slow. I would say in the Madden 23 beta, that has been improved. I still feel like overall, I think everything just feels a little bit sluggish. Again, I'm a fan of the Madden 21 current gen movement. And so there might be some people who think that the movement is in a perfect spot right now. So ultimately I would like to see it tuned up a little bit more, but it is a little bit better than in Madden 22. So one question that I think a lot of us have, are linebackers gonna be usable again? Or are we still gonna see, you can only animate with a defensive back or safety? Linebackers still don't jump. Oh, of course not. <laughs> they, they don't jump. I experienced it firsthand. What's weird, okay, what I will say is that the linebackers, they will animate better. Everyone seems to animate just a little bit better on intercept, sorry, I can't even talk. Interceptions side to side, like catching a ball to their right or to their left. Um, that's a little bit better without needing the acrobat ability. But in terms of balls over their head, linebackers can't jump. I'd say no change from that in 22. So the big burning question that I think a lot of the people that follow your channel and ones that I've seen follow this channel, will Civil still be able to run around like an idiot and complete <laughs> every pass in the world? I know he's gonna try. <laughs> now, whether or not he actually does, uh, we will have to see how the pass rush is tuned when the final game comes out. When the beta first released, the pass rush was ridiculous. It felt like no one had any time in the pocket. Uh, everyone was getting shed like crazy and contains were containing like crazy. And the moment you press right trigger with your quarterback while you're in the pocket, it's like everyone would disengage. It seems like they have tuned the sheds back just a little bit but it's still extremely difficult to have an offense designed around running around with your quarterback. Because the moment you start rolling out, it still seems like there's a lot of those disengages. And it seems like it's basically impossible to roll around a, an edge defender who's in a contain. Um, I've seen some people kind of toying with the idea of if the defender on the edge is in a contain, could we actually achieve a rollout by actually stepping up inside of that defender as he kind of goes around the outside? Um, and then you can, of course, then make your way to the sideline. But overall, it's not going to be a great year for people whose whole offense is based around <laughs> hiking the ball and sprinting to the sideline with the quarterback. That's just not going to work this year, especially 
with escape artist out of the game, or at least it's an X factor right now. And even when it's activated, it's tuned down a lot. If that's what your offense is based around, it's time to start kind of looking for some other offenses because you, not to say you'll never be able to get outside the pocket, but you can't build a whole offense around that in Madden 23. So no disrespect to Sybil. He's one of the best players in the entire world, obviously. <laughs> he, he He's he's going to have a great offense no matter what. Yep. It, nothing will change that, even if they try to nerf his entire game. For sure. So you led into uh, a burning question that I had. I started seeing a lot of videos going around, a lot of people on Twitter talking about abilities. Abil abilities seem to be changing for a few different positions. And you mentioned escape artists moving to an X factor. Uh, share with us, if you can, a little bit of what the abilities are changing into, maybe specifically at the quarterback position, and how that can affect how the gameplay will actually play. Mm -hmm. So, I think that a lot of the abilities will still stay the, stay the same. It seems like there's still Gunslinger, Pass Lead Elite, and Set Feet Lead in terms of our quarterback abilities that improve throw velocity. So I saw no difference there. I did notice that the fast break ability, which not a lot of people use, but I've been using it a lot, that got a big rework. So now it's no longer an ability that changes, you know, your quarterback so much as it changes the blocking on those designed quarterback run plays and option plays. And so right now, what I like to do with fast break is, you know, and you may have seen Ragusa do it as well, kind of snap the ball and hurdle or jurdle to the side or up the middle. Uh, that's gone because it no longer gives you that instant control. It's purely improved blocking on those plays. So that was a big rework from uh, the fast break ability. And I'm not actually sure if there were too many other changes to the quarterback abilities besides, of course, the escape artist being moved to X Factor and the fast break ability. I know that there are some changes to abilities on the defensive side of the ball. It looks like one step ahead has been split into two abilities now, which are inside shade and outside shade. And so it's basically, and I'd have to check again. I only saw it once, but it seems like inside shade, it's either based on the direction of the cut. So it's like your player would have one step ahead against in breaking routes, or it would be where the cut happens. Like if the cut happens inside the numbers, then your player has one step ahead. If the cut happens, outside the numbers, that's where you would want the ability outside shade to kind of have what one step ahead used to do. So I thought that was a pretty interesting change to see it kind of split up into two separate abilities for what used to be just a single ability. Is this year going to be more of a zone year or a man year in your opinion on defense? I think it is a zone year. And again, we'll see when the full game comes out. But right now, zones play extremely well there's actually some people right now who are trying to tell ea that the zones are too good because we're back to having situations where say you have you know against a cover three shell you have a, a pull route so you have like a streak to kind of take an outside third deep and you have a crosser coming underneath uh sometimes it kind of feels like that outside third has eyes in the back of his head and you try to throw that crosser underneath and the outside third will instantly react and come down and play that crosser. And there's some people who are not fans of that. Uh, to me, it just reminds me of how the zones used to play back on like current gen Madden 21. I think it was kind of similar to that. And so zones are really strong right now. Again, we have no idea how they will be tuned, but the zones seem to play everything. There's a lot of interceptions in the Madden 23 beta. Uh, there's, as far as I can tell, there's not really any one play touchdowns and I'm sure someone will find a one play touchdown at some point, but the zones don't really give up one play touchdowns at the moment. And even if someone does find a one play touchdown, I think the pass rush is so strong that there might not be time for that one play touchdown to develop anyway. Um, but I just don't see a reason to play man coverage or match coverage right now when zones are playing this well. Now you talked about passing and you, you even hinted at, the pass lead system that's mm -hmm. new to Madden 23. Is this like the 2009 Madden where we had, was it 2009? I think I'm right there. The, With vision the pass cone? lead cone and then 
Uh, I think we had another iteration of it a couple of years back with just the pass lead. The, the, the target passing yeah. in Madden 18. Yeah. It's, uh, it's better than both of those. And so as you may have seen in some of the trailers, there's a shaded ellipse around your receiver when you throw the ball. And then within that shaded, shaded ellipse, you can place your reticle in any spot you want to have a precision pass. And I think that it's a really great idea. I think that the implementation hasn't quite been perfect. And that's kind of what I go into details about uh, in the video going up on my main channel, uh, which may or may not be up depending on when this video goes up. Um, but I, the things I'm hearing right now and kind of experiencing are that it seems like pass velocity is not as good when you are using the the new passing system compared to turning it off and using the classical passing system. It just seems like the balls are floating more. It seems like when you have the reticle on the edge of the shaded ellipse, which is going to be probably most times you pass, it, it's pretty tough to have the precision to place it kind of halfway between the player and the edge of the shaded ellipse. I'd say most pass leads are going to end up somewhere on the edge of that shaded ellipse. And whenever the reticle ends up in that spot, it seems like we're getting a lot of inaccurate passes. Um, and so what I say in my video on my main channel is that I predict that this will be a year where EA kind of fine tunes this system. And then maybe in Madden 24, it will become a really great system. And it will also be the preferred system. Like we will figure out that this is what we should be using to get the best possible passes not the classical system and so that's my prediction for what will happen but ultimately we won't know for sure until madden 23 comes out in august uh the the final thought who do you think out of the main madden streamers or main madden youtubers is gonna have the meta who's gonna Ooh. set the meta what is that gonna look like it feels like it's been thrown the last two years but what do you think who's gonna set the meta i think that throne will always partially set the meta because he has such a big audience and also he gets to play with some of the best players in the world and so there will definitely be you know a big chunk of players who are going to run whatever throne runs um i also think that civil the last couple of years has done a really good job of setting the meta and so i definitely look out for whatever he puts out um but i also think that there are enough people who are in love with gun bunch and high profile players like Skimbo and Dubby, who I don't think will ever go away from Gun Bunch, um, that I still think Gun Bunch will be something that we see somewhat frequently. Because even with the nerfs that are kind of coming to it, it's still a really good formation with a lot of really good route combos. Um, and so at the end of the day, I don't think Gun Bunch will ever go away. And so that's kind of my prediction. We'll look out for Throne, look out for Civil and look out for Gun Bunch just like every year. Once again, a special thank you to Spruce Goose for joining us and giving us insight into Madden 23. If you're not already following him, definitely go check him out. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's dropping great content every single week. And if you did like this video, definitely check out this video where I give you the top five defenses in Madden 22.